What I want to talk to you about today are, are just things that I have observed over my career about why engineers fail as entrepreneurs and how to avoid them. The uh, first thing that I see with engineers is that there are often mismatches in personality traits because a, a, an entrepreneur needs a particular personality to be successful. And since I am an engineer, I can stereotype the traditional view of the personality of engineers and maybe not get in trouble. But if you think about what the stereotypical engineer is and contrast that with what are ideal characteristics for entrepreneurs, well, engineers are typically risk adverse and change adverse, and they're typically introverted, don't really like being in social situations. They're cautious and Occasionally, you find that um, engineers become experts in a very narrow field. But if you compare the, the attributes that make successful entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs are usually risk takers. And they are socially skilled. They're comfortable in social settings. They're very flexible, very fast moving, very driven. Um, they normally don't have a deep knowledge of anything, but they have a little knowledge on a very broad set of topics. And they have good financial instincts, which is not necessarily characteristic of engineers. So one thing you might ask yourself is, do, if you think you want to be an entrepreneur, is, is your personality well matched for the demands of being an entrepreneur? Because you will be much happier in life if you pick a career path that is well matched to your personality. The um, Founder Institute is a very interesting organization. They recruit successful entrepreneurs to be mentors for aspiring entrepreneurs. And they have a feedback system in place where they try to measure what makes a successful entrepreneur. And what they found in the training of over a thousand entrepreneurs per year is that interest in novelty is the single biggest item that determines whether you can be a successful entrepreneur. So if you're always thinking about innovative and new ways to solve problems, that's the most important thing. Being able to think on your feet. Um, uh, the CEO of a startup company, I can relate to that because I have investors asking questions that you need to be able to respond to or else they might decide they don't want to invest in your company anymore. And maybe bad news for the people in this room is age. One of the things they learned is older is better. Now, the only thing I can correlate that to is experience. If you have a broader range of experience to help you make decisions, I think that's valuable. But that doesn't say young people can't be entrepreneurs. It just says you need to recognize that experience is valuable and be able to work around it. But if you don't have all of those personality characteristics, don't, don't fear because very few individuals have got all of the right personality characteristics to be a successful entrepreneur. But what that means is you need to understand where your strengths are, you need to understand where your weaknesses are, and then you need to surround yourself with complementing skills. So um, building out, an, you know, a company normally requires putting a group of people together. You want to pick people that would be your partners in business that can complement your weaknesses and make you stronger. And you want to learn. You know, I had the great opportunity to learn from probably one of the best entrepreneurs. Uh, Mark Smith won the Entrepreneur of the Year Award in the Southeast United States. And I worked under him for years. And I learned from him. And I made it a mission to learn from him. Seek out those types of opportunities for yourself. The second reason engineers fail is because they fall in love with technology. I have spoken, particularly on the VC side of my interest, with so many engineers and they walk in and they say, you got to see what I have invented. And they are just passionately in love with what they have invented. Well, I think you ought to, uh, if you remember the, the Field of Dreams, was it? If we build it, they will come. And Building a company and trying to produce a successful company, you need to be working from the premise of if you build it, they are not going to come. You have to make them come. And just because you built the coolest product in the world does not in any way guarantee you that you're going to have a successful company. So the way to avoid that is don't let yourself fall in love with your technology, at least not the technology only. Certainly you need to be passionate about what it is you're doing but you can't ignore reason number three, which is really the thing that I want to talk the most about today. Reason number three of why engineers normally fail as entrepreneurs is that engineers fail to worry about the most basic principles of business. And in general, you get so excited about this thing that's been invented 
that's your baby that you just assume everybody in the world is going to love it too. And that's not the case. The truth is you have to create demand for your product. Very, very few products have ever been invented that just virally created demand for themselves. And we're going to talk a lot about that in this discussion. But you have to be able to answer the question, can I make money with my idea? Now, starting a company and having it be successful is not the easiest thing to do. If you look at statistics, um, let's look at a couple of different classes of stats. One, the Small Business Administration, who provides small business loans for lots of startup companies, tracks statistics of companies that they have provided loans to, and 33% of them failed in the first two years. 56% of them failed in the first four years. Now, you could also look at that and say, 46% of them survive at least four years, which is not a terrible statistic. But I will also tell you that I've been involved, um, particularly as an investor perspective, in a handful of companies that survived for eight years, but really never accomplished anything. So the concept of surviving and the concept of uh, excelling are very different. 